Everybody, thanks for joining on actually one of my favorite cars. You know, everybody has, uh, uh, you know, this business itself was built on I Remember When. You know, we rode around in these cars that maybe we couldn't afford back in the day, and then we come and finally get our lives together, rhythm in there, uh, and our careers and kids and stuff, and then we can finally go out and get one of these. Well, that happened to me. I obviously couldn't buy one new, but uh, when that finally happened, I owned this exact car, and this was such a great car. I just tell you, the reason why it was such a great car was because it was already an exotic car. You say, but Tony, how could an 82 Corvette be an exotic car? Let me run down the list of things with you. First off, uh, I believe every dealer got uh, one of these uh, as, a, as, a, as a showcase for the Corvette and the end of the Corvette. Many people don't know this, but there was no 1983 Corvette. It was only a year uh, that they skipped. And then you get into the features that here, for instance, four-speed overdrive automatic, fuel injection, right? Cool interior, great stripe kit, right? Four-wheel disc brakes, four-wheel independent suspension, power windows, power locks, uh, T-tops, right? It goes on and on, full gauges. This car was loaded to the gills, but it was expensive for its time, and that's why these cars have continued to go up. This car is amongst a lot of other great-looking supermodels in this showroom and the other showrooms as well, but out on the road, it looks so cool. The finned wheels are great. These are uh, uh, specific for uh, the collector edition, and the big BFGs all the way around just add a really muscular look to it. It's just a great-looking car, so representative of the 80s. I love the 80s. It was just great. And uh, when I watch movies from there, I see once in a while a car like this, and it says, ah, now I know why they put that car in it. All right, so let's go over paint for a second. Uh, this is actually a little bit nicer than the factory would have done, and I'll tell you why. So I believe this decal here has been cleared over to preserve it uh, because you can't feel it anymore. And it looks really, really nice. So it's, I, uh, the paint quality is way nicer than the factory did circa 1982. And I'm showing you uh, this only because it's really, really nice, and you can really, really see uh, how well it's been done. And that way you can see the mirror finish it and see all the letters that you can read as well. All right, these are, uh, let's look under the hood for a minute because I want to share with you some things that just say, uh, you know, collector car for the future. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because this does have a lot of things on it that previous Corvettes did not have. For instance, the first year for fuel injection. Don't be, don't, don't for a minute think that these cars are slow and sluggish. First off, they're pretty light cars. This car is fast. With the overdrive automatic, it was even faster, right? But you still have some cool luxury stuff. I love the fact that the underhood light works. You gotta uh, got be kidding me, the underhood light, like you're gonna focus on that? Yes, I'm gonna focus on that for a minute because that didn't work two years after it was new, right? And the fact that it still works there says a lot about the whole rest of the car. If somebody's gonna restore a car or make sure that they've loved it and take care of it properly, they fix all of the little stuff and that's what I like about that right there. Original decals under the hood, the crossfire here, the caution for that, so many original style pieces under here uh, to give you an idea if you decided that you wanted to show this, take it to a car show uh, and do it. You see the headlight buckets are, are there, they've all been restored and I think that uh, when we look at this car from the side, it just has a great, great stance. All right, so as the last run of the C3s, GM has always done a great job with the last of the gears of the Corvettes, like even like the 96 Vets with the Grand Sport, stuff like that. They've always done a great job exiting the Corvette out with a really, really great car, the 427 cars um, for the C2s, and then the 427 cars uh, later on in the, uh, the last run before these exotic cars that we're just talking about with mid-engines. We're in the 2020s now. So, but the one thing I do like to talk about is this, is that the Corvette style is still some of the best style ever. There is no mistaking this car going down the road that it is a Corvette. If I hide this badge, if you're driving a car that you just don't even care about cars, maybe you're driving a Prius because you know what, cars are a necessary evil, which I can't understand, but anyway, they're necessary evil, right? You know right away that that is a Corvette. It just says Corvette, and this is exactly what that is. Um, we'll pop that for you in a minute, but this is a one year only where the glass hatch opens up, and to find these uh, is pretty rare, so it's nice that this is all in great working order. That one year only option, kind of nice, where you can get that right there, which is cool. You get your T-tops, throw some storage and bags in there. These come with the T-top bags. These are the mirrored versions too. So they're actually they're bronze. And so bronze was the only one uh, uh, for the collector edition cars. The other cars had a smoked gray tinted uh, a T-top. I don't know, it's just little tiny touches like that give you an idea. When you see these cars, for instance, when we get inside, you'll see the door panels. The door panels are three different colors and so are the seats and things like that, which definitely defined uh, collector edition. 
All right, so come on, join me inside here uh, for some luxury. We have things like power seats, we have tilt wheel, we have power windows, we have uh, telescopic steering, okay? We have power mirrors, we have full gauges, which is nice. We got 7,000 RPM TAC, we have all these gauges in here. We have circa a 1980s uh, AM FM cassette. So your choices are a couple of things. You can put a stock radio back in here and hide a digital sound system in the glove box if you like, because a lot of people ask us to do that, because then you can stream your music from uh, your phone. We can be listening to things like Poison and Mon Jovi, and not that I remember the 80s very well, but maybe there were a couple other uh, metal hair bands that were available. Uh, but what we really are talking about is a car that you can travel in. So although it has great style, we are talking about great looking leather and the, and the door panels and these seat covers, all the storage that's back in here, T-tops off or T-tops on, you got air conditioning, you got great heat, and just as you cool and you ride in this car, I say, I've always say about Corvettes is I feel like they put a seat, a steering wheel, and someone in the car, and then they built the whole car around them because you just fit perfect in it when you ride. All right, so we close up this video, the last run of the C3 Corvette. Every option you could possibly get from the factory wrapped up in this car and things that all the previous generations didn't get, right? Uh, this one here, 50,113 original miles on the car. This even has a clean Carfax. This is right around the time the Carfax started. Carfax started in 1981, the first year of the 17-digit VIN. Right, this is an 82, so the Carfax shows the history on it. This is an important piece of history because you can document it back to there, and not to mention, it's a great looking car. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this uh, collector edition Corvette. Don't forget to share this video if you would with your friends and uh, hit the like down below. Also, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, the Corvette stories that you had. Maybe you're driving around in one, maybe your parents had one, your dad, mom, somebody. Uh, maybe somebody in the neighborhood had one, and that's how you got bit by the car bug. And uh, lastly, we're going to go for a test drive, and that should help you find a way to get this in your garage.